Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a nice day. It's sunny here in Iowa. It's an amazing 33 degrees. And this is all the perspective in life today. I was able to go out and take a walk because it feels really nice. Well, welcome. Uh, this is uh, the month of the heart, uh, Valentine's, uh, as well as uh, heart disease month. And so that's what we want to focus on today. Thank you for joining. Um, uh, we want this to be interactive. So there will be some polls and questions. Um, uh, there were a lot of questions submitted this time, and I'll try to go through all of them uh, during the course of this presentation. I have chosen a couple to start um, that may be unrelated to the topic, and then I'll answer many of them through the um, presentation, and then we'll uh, look at them at the end as well. All right, we will get started. Uh, feel free to post your comments and uh, any questions you may have. All right, a couple of submitted questions. Is type 2 diabetes reversible? We get type 2 diabetes when we gain weight and do not do enough activity and make some wrong nutrition choices. Um, I have had pa many patients who have been able to lose a substantial amount of weight uh, and then for a number of years um, have normal sugars. So in a sense, short answer is yes. Um, some may argue, hey, biologically it's always there once you have the diagnosis, but clinically, yes, it is reversible with proper lifestyle changes. What is a good blood pressure range for a type one diabetic? So a person with type one diabetes, um, usually do, they do not have blood pressure problems. Um, and that's why it really doesn't matter. But after long-standing diabetes or because high blood pressure is common, uh, they may have high blood pressure and the range would be similar, which I'll describe in a moment for type two. Uh, ADAs is less than 140 over 90. All right, um, do you know someone with heart disease? Do you have heart disease? Do you have a loved one with heart disease? Well, you may because a lot of uh, people, it's the number one cause of death in the United States, accounting for one in four, every four deaths. Um, and diabetes, which is very common, increases your risk for developing heart disease uh, as well. So in a sense, when we talk about heart disease, you may hear many different things, a heart attacks, congestive heart failure. In this context, the main thing I'm saying is heart disease as in heart attacks, angina. So what happens is due to multiple factors, which are more prevalent in diabetes, a plaque will build up uh, slowly over time, and that will narrow the blood vessel and prevent downstream flow of blood. Uh, and at some point, uh, the plaque will rupture, and that's when you will have a heart attack. So that's the heart disease we're talking about. There are, of course, many, many other kinds of heart disease. Is it common? Of course it's common. As we get older in this slide, um, so people between the age of 60 and 80, one in five will have heart disease men, and about one in 10 women will have heart disease. It is common. It is very common. Um, now let's talk about uh, what is the leading cause of death in people with diabetes? Everyone is saying heart attack. All right, well, excellent, then it is. Maybe our topic was leading here, but yes, you are so right. It is heart attack, and then if you look at, so four out of 10 people heart attack, but then two or three more due to very related condition, heart, other heart disease and stroke. So seven out of 10 people, about six to seven out of uh, uh, 10 people uh, aged 65 or older with diabetes die from some form of heart disease. So that's really what it is. Two to four times more likely to die from heart disease than adults without diabetes. Bottom line is diabetes increases your risk for heart disease substantially, and you may ask why. Um, and notice the sequence, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and then also high blood sugars often can damage the blood vessels over time. And we'll talk about all these in a moment. Here's another question for you, true or false. Um, men with diabetes are at a higher risk for developing heart disease than those, uh, than women without, uh, with diabetes. True or false? Uh, it's showing the last question right now on the poll. I have people answering this poll, okay. and 75% um, so far are saying true. 
All right. So what you're saying is men are at a higher risk. And if you saw the previous slide, there was a general population. You saw how men were definitely at higher risk. But what is really fascinating is diabetes. So women have an advantage, but diabetes totally gets rid of that advantage. So it is actually false. And in, in some data tends to suggest women may have even higher uh, risk for um, heart disease than men. 40% more likely to develop heart disease, 25% uh, more likely to have a stroke and uh, then compared to men, and then four times more likely to have heart failure than women without diabetes, four times. So I think this is one of the important points. If there are a few things I would want you to remember, this might be a good one, that yes, in general, women have lower heart disease than men, but diabetes takes that advantage away. So keep that in mind. So think about this month uh, and take care of your sweetheart's heart this February. That's important. Women are the chief health officer of the house. So they take care of everyone's health, uh, but not their own. So the men in the audience um, need to do a better job, uh, including myself, of taking care of our sweetheart's hearts. All right, what's your risk for heart disease? Um, there are risk factors that we cannot change, age, gender, race, family history. We can change those. But there's so many others that we can change. Weight, blood pressure, activity, smoking, um, nutrition, or diet. So we'll look at all of these in more detail. But please know that you can calculate your heart risk. Uh, the one that I really like is the cvriskcalculator.com from the AHA. You put these different parameters and it gives you 10 year risk uh, for heart disease. I would ask you, and we can send this in a follow-up email or uh, paste it in the chat box, uh, this uh, web link. Any questions or are we good? I think everybody has asked their question uh, beforehand already, so that's awesome. All right, all sorts of stats, but that's where it stopped. I think we really now need to go from realizing that it is important and it is more in diabetes to really saying, what can we do about it? So from here, we shift gear and just talk about um, uh, how to prevent heart disease as a patient with diabetes. So you know my ABCs, the A1C, blood pressure and cholesterol. Uh, blood pressure and cholesterol especially can help, really, if you manage them better, will reduce the risk of heart attacks. But then I also add the D and E. So today we're going to talk about A, B, C, D, E of diabetes, um, A1C, blood pressure, cholesterol, diet, and exercise. These are the things we want to talk about today. A1C, um, high levels of blood glucose may cause damage and reducing may help. I'm not saying definitely it will help, but in general it helps because everything else gets better with uh, reduction in blood sugars. What is more important today, not the target, but really what's more important is how you reduce your A1C. Luckily, in the last 10 years, we have had many trials in patients with diabetes where we have had these newer medications showing that they reduce the risk of heart attacks and strokes. And these medications, the ones that have been proven, are in two classes. One is these pills called SGLT2 inhibitors, which make the sugar go out in the urine. Jardians and Invokana have been shown to reduce the risk. And then there are these shots called GLP-1s, and Victoza and Ozempic have been shown to reduce the risk. So you may want to talk to your doctor and say, hey, um, hey, I have a higher risk for heart attacks, uh, and how can we reduce my risk? Can we change my medications? Please do not stop any medication on your own. Of course, talk to your doctor to make that change. All right, moving to B, the blood pressure. Um, blood pressure is extremely important for prevention of uh, heart disease. It's a major risk factor. Uh, ADSA is less than 140 over 90. And that's what I would say for even someone with uh, type 1 diabetes. Um, I personally, if you are healthy and young, uh, I would shoot for 130 over 80. And maybe for type 1 also, I would do the same. I will pause for a question. Casey, we have a question from the audience. Yes, Andy wants to know, so Bidurion has not been shown to reduce risk of heart attacks. Have studies been published that showed no difference or have studies yet to be published? Great question, Andy. Uh, Bidurion has been studied in a trial called Excel and that trial uh, for a number of different reasons, probably design uh, and some other reasons as well showed lack of harm but uh, and showed some improvement, not, but not statistically significant. So we cannot claim that Bidurion has the same effect on 
uh, improvement uh, of uh, risk for heart attacks and strokes. I personally think that there is a benefit, but that's a personal opinion. Data does not, we don't have the data to prove that in. Great question. All right. When you reduce your blood pressure, you can have substantial reduction in your risk for heart attacks and strokes. So just keep that in mind. 140 over 90, if young, healthy, even lower. How you reduce your blood pressure may be important. So there are certain classes of medications that all patients with diabetes should be on. So anybody not on these, please type no in your um, in your chat box. And there, if you don't have high blood pressure, you don't need to be on these. But the medicines are in two classes, very related classes, what I call the PRIL classes, P-R-I-L, lisinopril, enalapril, benazepril, and then the uh, TAN classes, that's just Dr. B's wording, uh, losartan, valsartan, olmisartan. So think about being on those if you have high blood pressure or protein in the urine. Not only they help with the heart attacks and stroke, but also with kidney function. All right, C, um, cholesterol. How do we reduce cholesterol? So what we did today is we just wanted to talk about, there's a lot of numbers in cholesterol. So I just wanted to present something which hopefully will make it memorable. We have happy or high density cholesterol, you want more of this one. So HDL should be high. It cleans up your arteries. Then we have the LDL, the low density cholesterol or the lousy cholesterol. The lower that one, the better it is. So hopefully it's easier to remember. HDL, happy, want more of it. LDL, lousy, want less of it. Triglycerides are the other component uh, and you want them less as well. Uh, less than 150 fasting, uh, less than 200 is good enough from my perspective. And then total cholesterol, which is a function of all these three other things. And the goal is to be less than 200. Do you remember your cholesterol numbers? Do you have them available? Your data should be in the palm of your hands all the time. Get these numbers on your smartphone. Um, use an app, My Diabetes Home, you can use. All right, how do we reduce your cholesterol? Um, uh, and how do we reduce by reducing cholesterol? ADA, American Diabetes Association says, moderate or high intensity statin therapy may be needed, especially if you have heart disease, stroke, or have multiple risk factors, which I talked about earlier. You definitely want to be on statin. So they reduce the lousy or LDL cholesterol, and hence the plaque that I showed you earlier in a different section, they reduce that plaque over time and then reduce the risk for heart attacks and strokes. Um, one of the things just to be aware of, I think once you have diabetes, this is probably a minor issue or a non-issue, but something to keep in mind that statins do have an effect on sugar. There are some that increase and some do not increase. And atorvastatin, statin. Uh, and simvastatin may increase risk. Um, atorvastatin probably the most, the other two lesser. Um, I want you to be aware of this, but I don't think this warrants any action, uh, rapid action on your part. It may be a slight increase in sugars and that can be easily managed with your uh, diabetes medications. Keep taking the statin. A number of studies show the 25 to 40% reduction in heart attacks and strokes. That's important. FDA says that you definitely, the benefits outweigh the risk. Uh, the risk reduction, 25 to 40%. Um, so do not stop taking your statin. I showed you the last slide. That's just for knowing that this may happen and that we do something about it. My overall thoughts, all patients with diabetes should be on a statin, uh, type two diabetes. Type one, um, after 20, 25 years of uh, diabetes, I start treating them as a type two. Um, the dose and statin specifically depends on your risk and how much reduction we need. Um, targets, some associations started saying targets are not important. Or I have always maintained knowing your cholesterol and shooting for a target is important. LDL less than 100 for most patients and less than 70 if you have multiple risk factors or you have heart disease. All right, so we talked about ABC, moving along to diet. Again, please remember, you can ask any questions and we'll answer those uh, as well. 
All right. So moving to D, the nutrition or diet. Um, uh, it's a very, very, it could be a huge topic. So that's why I said, I just want to give a point or two. So the DASH diet is really powerful in reducing both blood pressure and cholesterol. Um, and what it focuses on is reducing fat, cholesterol, added sugars, and sugary beverages. That's what you want to reduce. And then it wants you to take more of dairy, fruits, veggies, whole grains, nuts, fish, and lean proteins. So think about that. That's what you want to do. Uh, it just gives you an idea of what to reduce and what to take more of. Um, a colorful plate. This is a very colorful plate on the um, left side. And the more color you have, the better. Um, uh, a more natural color. Of course, you can add color to anything and make it. Uh, I'm talking about natural color. So that's the DASH diet. It's very easily available. I would urge you to Google it. You'll find a PDF, download it, print it, use it. Um, the NIH um, made it. And so I really think you should consider uh, that um, as a powerful option. What does the ADA say about uh, changes to diet? Uh, same kind of things. Um, you can have carbs, of course, but carbs that are high in fibers and more natural, veggies, fruits, whole grains, legumes, and dairy. Um, again, I just reemphasize the avoid sugary drinks and uh, diet sodas. Um, if there's added sugar, limit that. Um, and really, there's no single diet uh, for every person. Find what works for you. I say lifelong, a, a diet that is so pleasant and enjoyable and healthy that you can um, follow it for lifelong. And lastly, E for exercise. Um, and exercise is extremely important. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, you know, every morning uh, I'm on the elliptical, then I'll uh, have some walking meetings. We recently walked, um, we had uh, bought uh, three exercise bikes uh, workstation bikes for our office. In fact, our next webinar will be done through one of those. Um, what you want to do is aerobic activity about 150 minutes a week. So walking, biking, jogging, and so forth. Um, strengthens heart and lung, gives you energy, and reduces your risk for heart action strokes. And then you also want to do muscle strength and stretching at least two days a week. Bottom line is most days of the week, you want to exercise, most days. Um, I've been lucky over the last few years, I've been able to get into this habit that I have to exercise almost every day, sometimes twice a day, and that makes me feel really good and efficient. All right, exercise does reduce your risk. 60% decrease in heart-related mortality was shown in men who were moderately fit compared to low fit. And four hours of activity per week proved to provide heart protection for women with type 2. So really, for males and females, for both, exercise offers a significant reduction in risk. I do not want a heart attack. I do not want a stroke. So what can I do? A, B, C, D, E. Those are the five things we ought to do. All right, we are getting close uh, to the end. Uh, we'll conclude in a moment. Uh, but any um, questions you have, uh, please put in the chat box as well. We'll go through all the questions that were submitted earlier. Uh, let's get started. Does high blood pressure cause heart disease? Um, yes, it's a major contributor uh, to heart disease risk in diabetes and patients without diabetes. It's kind of the second one on the list, so as to say. So um, better blood pressure control uh, will help. What should the target be? Type in the chat box, what, blood, what should be our blood pressure target? All right, does exercise lower blood pressure? Exercise in the long run leads to better weight and it does reduce blood pressure. In the short run, if your blood pressure is poorly controlled, you may want to be careful on what kind of exercise you do, but it does help with blood pressure. Does shortness of breath automatically mean a heart attack? No, it doesn't. Shortness of breath can happen for many reasons. Lungs or heart are the two major things to think about. So really it could be the lungs and asthma, a COPD due to prolonged smoking, or it could be heart attack or congestive heart failure. So no, it doesn't. Um, and there are multiple things. So if you are getting short of breath um, as a patient with diabetes, I would be very concerned and I would get to a doctor and talk to them about it. They may do a stress test to find out. 
All right. What is more important, uh, diabetes control, blood pressure control, or cholesterol control? I assume this is asked in the context of heart disease reduction. Um, I love diabetes. So I'll always say diabetes in the general sense. But uh, really, if you think of heart uh, disease context, blood pressure and cholesterol are more important than sugar control. By the way, again, thank you for all these questions. A uh, bunch of questions were submitted, so that's awesome. What foods are good for a healthy heart? I would love if you guys just speak now and say, hey, uh, maybe we should have an ability to speak. Uh, we talked about this, right? Generally, the unprocessed natural foods, fruits, veggies, whole grains, uh, fish, uh, those are the things you want to consider for a heart-healthy diet. Think about the DASH diet. Does the use of CBD oil decrease blood sugar? So CBD um, um, uh, derived from cannabis, uh, and there is no evidence. I looked um, all over PubMed, there's no evidence that CBD oil will reduce blood sugars. Is acupuncture a viable treatment for type two diabetes? Um, I have seen some remarkable things with acupuncture. Uh, but based on this question, I looked at the literature in the PubMed, and there was no study that showed effect of acupuncture on type 2 diabetes. Is it true that exercise can increase the heart size? Yes, uh, exercise can increase the heart size, but in the right way. As you do more, uh, the ventricles, the chambers will adapt, and it will do it in the right way. Lance Armstrong, uh, his heart size, uh, if I remember, I read somewhere, was twice the normal size or so forth. The heart size also increases in some not good ways in diabetes, like congestive heart failure and things. But exercise does it in some people in the right way. All right, uh, there is an online question as well. Casey, go ahead. Andy would like to know if you know if THC influences blood sugar. So uh, the question is, THC, um, does it influence blood sugar? Does not come to mind um, that it does. Uh, we will get back to Andy. Um, we would have his contact info. Yeah, so we'll get back to you on that. But there's, uh, from my standpoint, I've not seen anything over the last 15 years or research studies saying that that may happen. Thank you for that question. We do like questions. All right, how are we doing with time? Because we can chit chat a little bit more. Very good. All right, I think we're getting close to the end of our presentation. Oh, what can be done if your heart size interferes with the breathing? It's not necessarily that the heart size would interfere with breathing, but the common situation where this will happen is in congestive heart failure, um, where the heart size may or may not get larger. If that happens, you want to be treated for that. And the uh, main things there are is to change your diet so you have less salt. Uh, there are certain medications that help you get rid of salt, uh, Lasix and so forth. But also those medications, the pills I was, were talking about earlier, the Invokana and Jardians and Parsiga, they actually have a very beneficial uh, effect on congestive heart failure admissions to the hospital, as well as death from congestive heart failure. So that's kind of a neat thing that these medications do. Casey, go ahead with the question. Uh, Theodore wants to know, how does HIV affect diabetes type two specifically? So the question is, how does HIV or AIDS affect uh, type two diabetes? So um, it depends. In the early stages, it may not have much effect. Um, later on, people can develop insulin resistance um, and that can lead to worsening of diabetes. Certain medications that people take uh, for HIV and AIDS can also increase the blood sugars. So there is a relationship and we just have to manage a little bit more proactively. The medications used are the same. Um, there are rare interactions between uh, the medications in the class. Um, so, uh, but that's how it is done is just being more proactive. Uh, and being tested for diabetes once you have it treated the same way in general. All right, um, before we conclude, I'm going to show you our new feature, local community. A lot of patients were asking, hey, where do I get this or that? So we put together a few things, the top categories are pharmacist group and others. So diabetes education, hey, here are the systems available and you can uh, find their number, their website and so forth. Um, you can email them. 
Uh, about fitness, these are the places which are a little more interested in diabetes. How about eye doctors? How about foot doctor? Um, how about a specialist in diabetes uh, like endocrinology? How about a support group? Uh, there is either online or in-person support groups. So we have put together a lot of information for you guys. Please use this information. As a reminder, it's all, only available in uh, Iowa at this point. All right, let's conclude um, right here. Having diabetes puts you at a greater risk for developing heart disease. Absolutely. Remember the A, B, C, D, E's of diabetes. A, and C, how you reduce it. Blood pressure, of course, and cholesterol, and that will protect your heart. Lifestyle is very important. I and all of our physicians, I think we're guilty of not focusing enough on the benefits of nutrition and activity. I had a lady yesterday, she uh, followed a new diet um, and she lost 40 pounds. It was marvelous, it means she stopped so many of her medications, insulin, and she's enjoying this diet. And so it's really powerful that nutrition and activity, diet and exercise, please, please think about those. And this really, let this be the month you say, I'll start taking care of my heart. Cool. Uh, well, thank you very much. What an active participation today. When the heart is at ease, the body is healthy. And that is so true. With that said, we'll see you again March 14th, 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. It'll be fun, physical activity. In fact, we might be doing some activity. I'll be on the exercise bike uh, for sure. Um, uh, maybe you guys want to be on something too. Let's have a webinar that's with physical activity. How cool would that be? Um, everyone have a great afternoon and uh, let's start taking care of our hearts. Let's change diabetes together.